Hello, I'm Dr. Jay Greenspan. One of the most common skin problems that kids face are warts. We see them all the time in the clinic and parents deal with them at home. What can we do about them? Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Jonathan Miller, who is Director of Primary Care Pediatrics at Moore's. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Thanks for having me, Jay. And Paul's with us, of course. Hi, hey, Jay. Jonathan, what are warts? Warts are bumps that you find on kids' skin, but adults can get them too, that are caused by a virus, human papilloma virus, otherwise called HPV. And this is a contagious virus that is pretty benign as far as warts are concerned, but can be disfiguring in some cases. It's, it's often a, a cosmetic issue for kids. Say an eight, nine-year-old has warts. What can we do about them? There are multiple treatment options for warts, but nothing for warts is very effective. In fact, the most effective way to get rid of warts is just to wait until they go away on their own because they almost universally all go away on their own. But sometimes it'll take months or even a couple of years before the wart goes away. If the wart is becoming problematic, if it's a nuisance, if the family really wants to get rid of it, there are several treatment options out there. Some people use what we call cryosurgery, which is actually freezing the warts. There's also topical medications such as salicylic acid, which is the active medication in compound W. And these topical medications, as well as freezing warts, the idea behind it is to sort of irritate the wart, stimulate an immune reaction, and have the kid's immune system fight off the warts on their own. So these, these treatments aren't actually intended to kill the wart as much as help the body fight the wart off. They're bothersome, but it's not really necessary? Right. Because childhood warts, not genital warts, is really just a cosmetic issue. Okay. So for a lot of kids, going through freezing them, which can be a little bit uncomfortable, or going through daily treatments at home with salicylic acid can be pretty cumbersome. In many cases, the choice is to just do nothing and wait for them to go away on their own. But warts, because they're a virus, can spread. And usually if they're going to spread, they're going to spread on the individual as opposed to somebody else. And so some kids will come in with warts all over. And in those cases, I think it's, it's worth treating as long as we give the family appropriate expectations as far as treatments, because treatments don't make them go away or fall off immediately. Sometimes it takes weeks or months for these to go away. And the treatments aren't 100% effective. So there's going to be a decent percentage of kids that don't respond to the treatments we have for warts. Jonathan, there's another infectious skin issue, molluscum contagiosum. Do you see molluscum as much as you do warts? So in my practice as a general pediatrician, I like to think of myself as a dermatologic pediatrician because I see a ton of derm here at Nemours. The large majority of what I see is warts and molluscum, and I see far more molluscum than I see warts. Molluscum is an incredibly common skin condition that we see in young and school-age kids, and this is also caused by a virus. It's caused by a virus, like you said, molluscum contagiosum and it causes little bumps. They're often smaller than warts, and they, they're often more plentiful than warts, too. Some, most kids with warts will have one or two. Most kids with molluscum will have 10 or 20, but they're often asymptomatic, and they usually don't bother the kid. They bother the parents, and if left alone, they also, like warts, will go away, but sometimes it takes a year or two. And if a child has molluscum, is it okay to put them in the bathtub with the sibling, or uh, is there a way to prevent it from getting to the sibling? So that's a great question. With molluscum, it can go from person to person because it is a virus, and that is how kids get it. Most families do not see spread within the family, but some families do. We do advocate that kids not share baths, not share linens or beds or towels, but swimming in a pool is okay. Good information. So you mentioned the contagiousness of these. So if a mom is treating a child's wart, should she put on gloves? How contagious is it? Most adults surprisingly don't get these infections with the exception of in sexually transmitted manners. So adults get sexually transmitted genital warts and molluscum. But transmission from kids to adults with warts and molluscum is extremely uncommon. And so I actually don't tell parents to put on gloves when they're treating this, just to use appropriate hygiene, wash with soap and water or with an alcohol-based uh, hand wash afterwards. Can these viruses uh, actually leave our system on its own, or do you have to treat them? So human papilloma virus doesn't just cause warts, or it doesn't just cause childhood warts. It also causes genital warts and is associated with some cancers, cervical cancer in women, penis cancer in men, as well as throat cancer. And so we know with warts that HPV can leave the system. In fact, it almost always does for kids. But when HPV affects women and causes changes that leads to cervical cancer, that's something that is a lifelong issue that needs to be followed. So I think when we talk about HPV, there's multiple things that we need to talk about. So you mentioned cervical cancer, Jonathan, and that brings up the issue of vaccinating against HPV. Can you talk about vaccination? Yeah, absolutely. So the HPV vaccine came out in the last 10 or 15 years. 
initially just for girls and women, and, and now it's for boys and men as well. And the HPV vaccine, again, human papillomavirus vaccine, is given to ideally teenagers before they are sexually active so that they can become immune to HPV before they're at highest risk for acquiring it. And so the thought is that if we get all of our young teenagers vaccinated against HPV, we're going to decrease the incidence of both genital warts as well as the cancers associated with HPV like cervical cancer, penis cancer, and throat cancer. Are there risks to that vaccine? So like all vaccines, the HPV vaccine can be associated with side effects, such as pain at the site of the vaccine, local reactions and redness. And, and in some cases, some kids will feel a little bit lightheaded at the time that they get the vaccine. This vaccine, however, is not associated with any serious or, or long-term adverse effects. It's a very safe vaccine. And how is that given? So that's given intramuscularly. We give it as a shot in the in the shoulder, right. and it's three shots over the course of six months. Okay. So very important to get that to prevent really some long-term complications and really bad things in adulthood. Absolutely. Great. And Jonathan, do you find most families are having their teenagers receive the vaccine, or is there concern, well, my teenager's not sexually active, therefore we can put it off? What, what are your conversations like? So most people are accepting this vaccine, but because it is not mandated for schools, it is one of the more commonly refused vaccines. And so we do have to have a lot of discussions about the medical indications for this with families. A lot of families don't think that their kids are sexually active, don't expect them to become sexually active anytime soon. And there's actually been some fear that giving this vaccine would increase sexual activity in kids, although studies have not shown that to be the case. Okay, so great information. So take-home messages, warts are incredibly common, and they're generally cosmetic. They are contagious, but not so much to the adults. They can be treated, but they usually go away on their own anyway. So treatment may or may not be helpful. But the HPV vaccine is very important. Great information. Thanks so much for clearing that up for us, Jonathan. And thanks for joining us on this chat. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. To our listeners, if you have a question about this topic, or if there's another topic you'd like us to explore in a future pediatric chat, you can send it to us by using the question portal on our webpage. And be sure to view our library for more pediatric chat programs. I'm Dr. Jay Greenspan, and thanks for listening.